Welcome to Electron Online, and here's the last video to help us understand the differential form of Gauss's law. Now we've seen a whole number of examples, but now we're going to take a look at what happens inside capacitor plates. So let's say we have a capacitor. We have charge on one side, positive charge on one side, negative charge on the other side. So we know that it's an electric field that exists between the plates. So there's our electric field from left to right. Now let's say we build an imaginary cube in there. That cube could be considered a Gaussian surface. And so let's take a look at the two forms of, the, of, the, uh, of Gauss's law. Let's start with the differential form of Gauss's law. It says that the divergence of the electric field is equal to the change in the electric field as a function of position. So what we learned that this simply implies that if I'm at some location inside the electric field and I move to a different location in the electric field, Whatever, however much the electric field changes, that would then be indicated by the divergence of the electric field. Now, we know that inside capacitor plates, the electric field is constant if we ignore, of course, the edge effects at the very edges of the capacitor. So if the field is not changing, we would expect the divergence of the field to go to zero. And that would be indeed the case because since the divergence of the electric field indicates a change in the electric field as a function of position, not as a function of time, but as a function of position, that then necessarily has to be zero. Another way of looking at the divergence of the electric field is that's equal to the electric flux coming out of an imaginary cube inside the field minus the electric flux going into the cube divided by the volume of the cube. But if the field doesn't change, that means whatever flux goes into the cube has to equal the amount of flux come, that comes out of the cube. Remember, the definition of flux is that's equal to the strength of the electric field times the area. Notice that the area, the surface area of the cube on the left side and the right side have to be equal. And the electric field is the same on, at the left side of the cube as it is on the right side of the cube because it's not changing. Because of that, we know that the flux remains constant. That means the flux going into the cube equals the flux coming out of the cube. That means that the difference between those two has to be zero. And so therefore, it is another way of realizing that inside capacitor plates, the, the divergence of the electric field is zero. And in the end, we can then take a look at the um, integral form of Gauss's law, indicating that the surface integral over this cube of the strength of the electric field times the area has to equal the Q inside divided by epsilon sub naught. But in this particular case, there is no charge inside this cube, so therefore, the charge inside is equal to zero. That means this must also equal zero, and therefore, the electric field times the A of a Gaussian surface simply indicates that it has to be zero because there's no charge inside the cube. And if there's no charge inside the cube, then the divergence of the electric field is zero because the electric field doesn't change, it is constant. And there you have another way of looking at the comparison of the differential form of Gauss's law versus the integral form of Gauss's law. And hopefully that seals it for good. Now you should understand Gauss's law in both the differential and in the integral form.